What's going on everybody? My name is Chen. In this video, I want to give you guys a tour on my 2022 desk setup. I'm currently working on being a self-taught web developer and a decent workspace to help with my productivity and brain inspiration is a crucial part of the formula. A place I will enjoy spend major part of my day constructing ideas, working on my skills without turning into a mundane exercise. In this video, I will go through every part I'm using, why I chose them, what are my thoughts, some alternative recommendations, and how I manage everything around my desk. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First, let's talk about the desk itself. This is the Autonomous Desk Frame Pro version. It has four memory buttons, allowing you to adjust the height from 25 inches to 51 inches. The legs on this frame are pretty solid, with three sectional columns able to support up to 300 pounds. So if you want to stand on it to hand some items high up on the wall, there won't be an issue. A lot of standing desk brands offer a limited option on their desktops. Take Autonomous for example, they only offer three different options on their 70 inch lawn top and they are all made from plywood, which I would expect in something with a higher quality. Other popular brands like Uplift offers a wide range of size and materials, but the price gets pretty steep when you spec up on options. So if you're in the market for a standing desk, Instead of buying the full package, consider purchasing them separately. Get a frame from a reputable brand and a top from somewhere else. Or custom build one if you have the tools and the space to do so. This way you will have the most flexible options on the styling that fits your likes and at the same time save you some money. After some research, I went with a Husky workbench top that I picked up from Home Depot. This is a 6 foot by 2 foot solid worktop that was initially designed for a workbench but it fits a standing desk perfectly. Unlike the popular IKEA Carby countertops, which require some post treatment to make it smooth and last, this top comes with a factory matte finish that gives the right amount of friction, and it looks absolutely gorgeous with the natural wood patterns. Cable management is always a pain point for standing desks, and I got this huge metal cable tray from Autonomous to tackle the task. I used these three different types of cable clips and put them all over the bottom side of my desk to make sure all the cables are secured and out of my sight. I also added a cord organizer box with another power strip inside to connect other accessories that's not moving around with the desk. Like this thing right here. This is the 10.3 inch pixel display from Divoom or Divoom, whatever the name is. It has 64 by 64 pixels that is able to connect to Wi-Fi and do some cool stuff. There are thousands if not more templates you can choose from the Devom app uploaded by the user community and you can even create your own. I mean, if you are talented like I am. To add some storage space around the desk, I have attached these two drawers to put items like card readers, external hard drives, and other miscellaneous stuff that I use in a daily basis. A great ergonomic chair is arguably the most important part of your work environment. For professionals like web developers who spend major part of the day in front of a desk, a place you can sit comfortably for hours is crucial to boost your productivity and prevent back issues. I end up getting this Herman Miller mirror. It's an amazing place to be with tons of adjustabilities. So why did I chose this over the iconic Herman Miller Aeron if you ask? Well, in my personal experience with both these chairs, they have a similar comfort level and functionalities. They both have a soft mesh seat, the seat back on the mirror is made out of plastic versus the mesh back on Aeron. And that's probably the only thing I would prefer Aeron to better distribute your weight and pressure on your back. Another reason is the appearance. The smooth curved lumbar support, the beautiful hole pattern spread out on the back. The design language on this chair is one of the best from Herman Miller. This is the first generation model. The updated mirror too has a redesigned back support with a stiffer looking upper channel and more color configurations for your specific taste. I also got the clear casters from Amazon to get rid of the ugly and loud factory wheels. Bruh. What would you guys pick between mirror and Aeron? Leave in the comment section below. This 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip has been my daily drive for the last eight months. This machine is an absolute powerhouse. Coming from a 2019 MacBook Pro with Intel chip, the Apple Silicon has been a dream come true for all the Mac users. The redesigned chassis is thicker, heavier, and much, much faster, while at the same time, quieter and cooler. It still blew my mind how Apple managed to do this. They also bring back the SD card slot and HDMI port, which I don't use them, but it's nice to know it's available now. 
The skin on my MacBook is from Dbrand. They have a huge selection of material choices, and each of them has its own unique texture. The MacBook stand allowed me to utilize more desk space and the low profile design with aluminum construction to blend in my setup perfectly. Now, I'm not gonna dive deep into all the detailed specs about this device. If you are interested, click the link on the upper right corner and check out one of my favorite tech channel, Dave2D's review on the 2021 MacBook Pro. I do wanna talk about my MacBook setup for web development, including some apps that I'm using, my VS Code setup, and workflow, which I will post in a separate video. The dock that connects to my MacBook is from a less well-known brand, Pluggable. This dock offers a decent amount of ports with a relatively compact size. However, it doesn't come with any Thunderbolt 3 downstream ports. For a $300 device, it's quite a disappointment. On top of that, it gets really hot just 10 minutes after power on. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this product to anyone considering the amount of options we have on today's market and the new Thunderbolt 4 docks with a comparable or even lower price point. On the other side of my desk is my Windows machine powered by Saitama Sensei, Saitama Sensei, Saitama Sensei, Sensei, Saitama Sensei, and this poor predator getting its way to the grocery store. You know what I mean if you watch One Punch Man. If you haven't, well, you could do better. I find myself spending very little time on this machine lately because I just don't have time for gaming at this point of time. Also, the M1 Pro chip in MacBook Pro is just OP to the moon. I decided to keep on my desk even though the Lianli 011 Dynamic Mini case takes a big chunk of my desk space. I still appreciate how beautiful these LED fans are and it adds more characteristics to my setup. I had this Dell U3419W for the last two years, a 21 by 9 ratio with a 34 inch IPS panel display. The highlight of this monitor is the USB input with a 90 watt power delivery which I could connect to the MacBook with the monitor speakers, and a keyboard just using a single Thunderbolt 3 cord, and charging it at the same time. The picture-by-picture -picture mode is another great feature of this monitor, which allows me to display two devices side-by-side. -side. There has been a newer version of this model, but nothing major upgrades has been placed. Personally, I still enjoy this old ultra-wide monitor, even though the bigger 49-inch panel seems to be the mainstream for content creating and gaming. If there's one thing I wish it could be better, it's the resolution which is why I'm super excited about the new 5K 2K displays from LG and Dell, a 30% higher pixel density than most ultra-wide displays on the market, with a 5120 by 2160 resolution packed into a 40-inch panel, is a sweet spot. To support this monitor is an Amazon Basic monitor arm, and from a credible source, it is a rebranded version of Ergotron LX at the half the cost. It has two separate adjustment arms, allow you to place the screen at any angle you want, it also comes with a cable container. Since I have cramped a tons of stuff on the back of my display, this feature comes in handy for me to clean up all the mess. On top of the monitor is a Xiaomi light bar. It is made entirely out of aluminum and it looks, feels premium. The stand is surprisingly heavy and it supports the light bar rock steel. It has a detachable mechanism with the two pin connectors and the groove design allows you to adjust the angle by tilting the light bar itself. It comes with a wireless control knob to change the brightness and white balance. Compared to the BenQ Halo light bar, it provides similar functionalities with one third of the price. Overall, this is an amazing product and I'm very happy with the purchase. I work on my personal projects after dark most of the days and a cozy lighting around my desk can help me relax and focus on the tasks. I added these Philips Hue light bar and attached them behind the monitor, paired with the LED strips on the back of my desk. This combo provides an evenly distributed environmental lighting. The Philips Hue app is easy to use with the intuitive navigation and a beautifully designed UI. And the most interesting feature I found from Philips Hue package is this. This magic trick is achieved by the Philips Hue Sync, a desktop app that can monitor your screen color and reflect the lighting in real time. You can choose to sync with either audio or video and change the color scheme and intensity for a different virtual representation. To do so, you will need a Hue bridge that's directly connected to the router and links to all the lights that you wish to sync. Once you get them all set up, just sit back and enjoy the show. 
being the long-term Logitech MS key user, the whole custom keyboard thing is boring to me. The lack of Bluetooth support, uncomfortable high typing position, etc, etc. But the moment I put my finger down on this board, it all makes sense. This is a KBD Fans Tofu 65% profile case with the brass plate and the hot swappable PCB board. I went with the Boba U4T switches, one of the most desirable tactile switches in the community. And the GMK Metropolis keycaps looks fabulous with the high contrast color scheme. I was happy with my Logitech MX keys. It's quiet and snappy and with a lot of Mac support functional keys. I just couldn't help myself but to find out what is this hype all about. I was swamped by the amount of information from this community and it's one of the things that I'm interested to dive deep in the future. But as of my first build, I'm really happy with how it turns out. I wasn't getting used to the thickness of this board and I grabbed a wooden wrist rest to compensate the typing height. It's a little shorter on length, but I found no issues to make my wrist happy. When it comes to mouse for productivity, nothing beats the Logitech MX Master series. This MX Master 3 is one of the best mouse you can get for functionalities and ergonomics. The Logitech option allows you to customize every functional buttons to match your workflow. When I leave the house, I'll bring this MX Anywhere 2S with me with its portability. I enjoy high quality audio, but by no means a hi-fi enthusiast. And I'm really happy with these PreSonus Aris E3.5. They have a relatively small footprint, so I can fit them nicely besides my display. At around 100 US dollars, I couldn't ask more for what it can bring on the table. I also paired them with some acoustic phone stands to make the sound just a little bit better. This video is not sponsored by any of the product mentioned. They are my personal items that I'm using and I want to give you guys a transparent feedback. Hopefully you can get some inspiration or references for your setup. Let me know which product is your favorite and leave in the comment section below. Be sure to give a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for more content in tech and web development. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.